I saw this and I thought to myself, hey, that's actually a pretty decent question to ask, especially if you're a newer player or haven't really taken the time yet to understand how some of the stats or uh, equipping works within Raid. If you don't know this, half of the game is having the champions that you need or having X amount of champions, specific champions to help fill whatever role you need. The other half of that is the gear, your stats, how you gear your champions. So it's important that you learn to gear your champions with intent, intentionally gear your champions with a specific purpose. Early on, more than likely, you're going to end up using like the same few champions. But as you progress into the mid game, late game, that's when you start to, because you have the champs and you're able to do the higher dungeons and you can start getting better gear, that's when you start to really um, specialize, so to speak. Unless you're, a new, unless you're a veteran starting a new account, then that's you know a little bit different. But if you're brand spanking new, never played anything like this, or you're just new to raid, you might not know a lot of these things. So that's why I think this is a good discussion to have. Happy Valuable, Valuable, Value Bill. Valuable 4771 asked the day ago, when do you use boots other than speed primary? Because for the most part, a lot of us put speed boots on our champions. And that's probably something that you're going to do for most of your champions. Unless you get like perfect gear and you're able to build like a, I don't know, 220, 240 plus champion, uh, like a nuker, for an example. And you're able to get like attack percent, defense percent, or HP percent boots, but still knock out like 240 plus speed. I'm not new to the game, but I won't pretend to be super knowledgeable. I see speed as one of the most important stats in the game, and I can't think of a reason you would keep any boots that don't have speed as their primary stats. Is my thinking flawed? Or is it just niche? Uh, niche champs who don't care about their speed also is there any way any reason sorry not to sell gauntlets chest or boots that have flat stats and not percentage primaries percentages always yield more gross stats for the most part i think that's how it works but i've seen some conflicting views i guess it's from people that know things that i don't which is oftentimes a lot I can't remember when or where or in what context, but I do remember somebody saying something along the lines or a group of people saying that sometimes flat like defense or HP uh, HP boots um, or chest or, or gloves would go better. And I think they were saying on lower level champions or lower rarity champions. And I think it was it went something the idea went something along the lines of like if I were to put I don't know attack percent gloves on Warboy especially early on well the attack percent is based off of Warboy's attack which is going to be pretty low especially in the beginning but if you give him like a 5 star or like a 6 star a, a, a t flat attack gloves or boots or chest or whatever you want that flat like 265 or whatever that number is, that flat 265 points of attack is going to overall benefit you and give you more stats than if you were to give him attack percent boots. But that was like a few, those were like few and far in between examples. So these are good questions here. And I wanted to go ahead and dive into what a lot of the people are, are saying here. Also. To answer this question, also, is there any reason not to sell gauntlets, chest, boots that have flat stats? Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention, reroll. Not really a thing if you're new or if you happen to get into the game and Polarium isn't just giving out ores. But you can use Chaos Ores to reroll flat boots or chest or plates, right? But you have to be very specific about which ones you want to roll. For an example, if I get lethal flat chest and it rolls like a triple or a quadruple 
I'm more than likely going to re-roll that. And I'm going to see if I can find an example of that somewhere. But because I remember I took a I took a picture of the gear. I can't remember where exactly it went. I should have I should have put it in my Discord, but I for some reason didn't. But basically I rolled like a quadruple flat on flat. It was like quadruple, I don't know, boots. And it was like flat HP. And then I re-rolled it. And it got HP percent boots for the main stat. And then it re-rolled to the quadruple four for speed. And that was pretty good. That was like probably one of the better rolls. I'd say like eight times out of ten. If you re-roll something using Chaos Or, it's going to end up worse or just about the same, like, just as crappy. He responds, no, not really. There are very few champions who don't care about speed at all. What is more common is a champion... Oh, sorry. What is more common is a champ doesn't need to be as fast as possible, and your gear has good enough substats that you are able to afford to put on attack percent defense or hp percent boots for example my georgid is my arena nuker i have him in attack percent boots but he's also 241 speed see this is right here good example from all the rest of his substats my team is speed tuned and that's how fast he needs to be in order to not get cut in line if he needed to be faster probably use speed boots and again this speed really depends on where you're at in pvp I think if you're starting out in early arena, I think you're fine going like 160 to 180, 190 to 200, the higher you go. Goal five, you want your nukers to be a minimum of like 220. 240 is pretty nice. And then when you get up into like live arena or plat, your nukers got to be going 240 plus, 270 even. I've seen somebody comment in one of my videos or one of my posts talking about how their uh, Rodos was going at like 276 or something like that. And I was like, that's pretty fast for a Rodos. That's really good. Obviously, the faster you can get your champion to go, the, the better. But you also want to make sure you're hitting those thresholds. And that's where it comes into play. Knowing your champion, knowing the stats to prioritize, knowing how they synergize within your team, and how the champions work, their skills, etc. It takes time to learn these things. Do not feel overwhelmed. If you come into raid and you're not exactly sure how everything's working, it takes time. This is a sprint, not a race. Okay. Agreed. The only time I will keep flat stats is when it has oh, where to go speed roll on speed set. I have a piece that was flat attack, but ended up being a quad roll on speed. That's a good example. I even saw somebody with mythical six piece. Flat attack, but it penta rolled on speed. He kept it, obviously, right? I think that's a good reason. Champions like Akrizia don't care so much about the main stat on your chest. Obviously, some defense stats would I be well, it would be ideal for her, but if you find a chest with a four perfect substats and don't have anything better, that's not a bad move. And that's the way it's going to go for a lot of your gear in raid when you're trying to gear champions. Let me see if I can find a good, a good example here on my wife's account. Uh, let's look at Armand's. Not the ideal set. Not exactly going as fast as I would like him to go. She's in like gold three arena. Not really doing live arena. She doesn't really play. Oh, she's in, she dropped down to gold two. That's right. Reset just happened and I haven't been playing um, diligently. Or let's find a, a better example here. Uh, let's see. I'm waiting to... Build Ugo, right? Ugo is one of those champions that's going to be widely used, especially in Hydra. And when I looked at how I could build Ugo this time around, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious, right? Because I know how skills work, right? I want to make sure I put speed boots on her. She's not one of the champions that I'm going to put like defense or HP, unless I can get her above like 240 speed because she's a support champion. But it's it's one of those things that you kind of just have to take your time to learn. Because you can go around Reddit. You can go around to your Discord. You can ask people all around, hey, how do I build this champion? 
how do I build this champion? You might get guys who are going to be like, this is exactly how you build him, and this is how you should do it. Or you're going to get guys who kind of get fed up with it eventually, like me. And I'm just like, dude, like, look up a guide. You're, you're a big boy. Like, figure it out. Learn the champion. You know what I mean? So there's two, two ways to it. I'm not saying don't ask for help, but I'm also saying you have the resources at your fingertips. You are capable of learning to do things yourself, right? It's okay to ask for help. Maybe once, maybe twice. But after a while, especially if you're like in somebody's clan, they're going to want to see you putting in that effort. Learning to make those distinctions yourself. High Katoon, one of those champions, you don't care about anything else except for speed. You just want to make sure she goes first so she can boost your turn meter, place increased speed. Of course, you're going to have speed boots on her, right? I'm trying to find an example. I'm trying to find an example of somebody who doesn't exactly need speed. All right, there, we just got Ninja. Can the argument for Geomancer be made that if uh, you make him slow enough, you keep the HP? No, that doesn't work like that. Never mind. What am I saying? Let me see if I can find a good example. I guess Emic, if you want him to go slow to keep the, the taunt up, that's a very niche, niche uh, example. I guess snake track might be a good example. I'm trying to find I'm I'm trying to think of like really good examples of somebody you wouldn't have um going fast. Oh, Vogoth. Does she have Vogoth? Here, Vogoth would be like the perfect example. Let me see if I can find a Vogoth. Here we go. Vogoth is probably one of the quintessential champions for this example that you do not want going fast. You do not want to put speed boots on this champion. Okay? For an example, my wife. I'm pretty sure I built this one, but my wife has her Vogoth in HP percent boots. Why is this? Well, because of his passive. Whenever this champion is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. Only 25% of the damage received from boss attacks. The champion receives only half of that heal. All other allies will receive. Every time he gets hit, he's spreading the heals. He's he's the gift that keeps on giving. He's he's your your sandbag. But every time you punch the sandbag, his allies benefit. And then he's got the leech. He's got provoke. He's got these things. But like this is the main thing. I don't see this too much in like gold 5 arena. But I'm pretty sure if you're like gold 4 or below, maybe you might see a few Vogoths in a team that is really tanky. In teams that are designed to be annoying. Ideally, you would put some maybe maybe Vogoth in a curing set, bolster set, maybe region, immortal, so he doesn't stop healing, so that he doesn't stop healing your team. Arena defense, check this. Demon Lord, he's got his uses there, exact exactly for, for keeping the heals up. So this is an example of somebody you don't want in speed boots. You want him to go slow. Oh, I forgot. Sun Wukong. The argument could be made that you want Sun Wukong to go relatively slow. You want him to be built slow and strong so that he can hit hard, right? But again, it ties into knowing his kit. Now, there are, there are different ways to go about this Sun Wukong, so don't take what I'm saying for, for like, you, you know, the baseline for everything that you should do for Sun Wukong. There's so many different ways to build Sun Wukong. Me, personally, I've tried Sun Wukong as a nuker, going about like 230, 240 speed, right? That's good. I've also tried Wukong going like just about this slow. Nuke stats, more crit damage, more attack, but slower, less HP. That works too. So why does that work? Revives this champion with 100% HP, 100% turn meter, three turns after they were killed. You kind of want him to die in this instance, right? You want him to get nuked down. Because when he comes back, he's going to have full turn meter. Then he's going to go. Then he nukes. Right? You just got to have a team that can stay up until he comes back. That's one way to do it, especially early on. If you really need a nuker, right? Attack percent boots. Of course, she's got the speed on the ascension. So, you know, there's that. But this is one way to go about it. 
I have flat stat chest on my crazy. A double speed and crit rate rolls can't seem to replace it. I can't remember which champs, but I've seen HH videos, Hell Hades, where he states that flat stats, I believe for a defense champion, was actually the best route. And then he says otherwise here. I did some experimenting. I wasn't actually sure how much a level 16 flat stat piece gave you, and I couldn't find a list, so I forged some pieces. Did a 5 star so the math would be easy. A 5 star flat defense, and this is this is hearkening back to what I was saying earlier back up here about sometimes for some champions you're going to want to have uh, flats. A 5 star flat defense or attack piece gives 225 points of defense or attack. A 5 star gives 50%. So a champ would have less than 500 50 base attack or attack for the flat for the flat piece to be better. For HP, five star piece has 340, three or uh, 3480 points versus 50%. So they would need less than I'm gonna be honest, I lost you here. But if you read this, you'll probably understand it better than I do because I stopped paying attention as I was reading this. There might be some case, some edge cases. With extremely low base stats, where the flat stats are better, I don't think there are, unless you want to be pedantic and include some common and uncommon champions, just like I did. And I don't think it is worth keeping unless other unless otherwise. Oh, I don't think it is worth keeping otherwise useless. I don't think it is worth keeping otherwise useless gear for what would be a very minor difference on those edge cases. There are some speed tuned uh, setups that don't want everybody to be super fast. In which case, you can get more bang out of percentage boots. Yeah, there are some uh, clan boss teams with nukers only going at like 150 speed. I think I recently did a video and like the, the, the DPS only needed to go at like 150 something speed. That's easy. Easy to put your defense percentage or HP or, or attack percent boots. Basically, whenever a champion has very low base stats, but you need to build as much of that same stat as possible, that's when you're going to want a flat attack or flat um, stats. Oh, here, perfect. UDK, perfect. UDK has zero speed gear in any slots. He's in stone skin for my arena grinder team. So the slower he goes, the longer he has stone skin. That's exactly right. Now, she missed out on getting UDK. But UDK is one of those champions where, oops, where is he? Uh, Night Revenant? Is he a Night Revenant? No, he's an Undead. What am I doing? Ultimate Death Knight is one of those champions who is just really tanky because of his passive, and he also takes the first hit no matter what. 100% chance to completely block one hit. Whenever an enemy is healed, he gets healed by 20% of that heal too. Just a super tanky champion. Everybody basically puts him in stone skin. And this is an example of somebody you would want in like defense or HP percent boots. No speed whatsoever. If you could get like absolutely zero speed on him, that's what you want to go for in stone skin. So that all he does is just stand there like a nice little rock or a nice big rock and just take it. It's hard to get, but ideally you want non-speed boots that has a ton of speed. Oh yeah, non-speed boots that has a ton of speed right there. Yeah, this is really hard to get. Check this out. Attack percent boots on a Slayer set. Speed ascension. Penta roll on speed. This is an amazing set. This is amazing right here. Still room to glyph. This is an amazing boot. That's that's like God tier to me. I roll every single piece of legendary gear I get to level 8. If any substat double rolls, then I roll it to 12 to see if I can get the sub to triple. If it triples, but it's a substat that I don't think is useful, then I will use Chaos Ore. I do the same thing. I also don't throw out legendary flat stats until I see they roll. When I, uh, when I manage to get a triple roll and a piece of gear that has a flat stat for its primary, I use Chaos Ore to re-roll it. Most of the time, it's going to end up being garbage. True. But sometimes... It re-rolls with a percentage main stat and a good triple roll substat. Probably have dozens of pieces that started out as a flat stat, but now are percentage main stats with a triple roll substat. Buy the forge pass whenever it's available. 
which has helped me to get Chaos Or. That's true. FP is probably one of the best, if you're a spender, best deals you can get in raid. Most bang for your butt buck. It's one of those things that I used to buy on a regular basis. This is his favorite boot. There are many boots like it, but this one is his. Without this boot, apparently Lady Kimmy is nothing. 53 speed. Although on Lady Kimmy is kind of weird, right? What a wasted potential being on Kimmy. Nice piece. When you're right, you're right. At the time, it made somewhat sense, but I definitely have better uses today. Need to move it. I mean, it is what it is. Attack percent boots on Sham and Trunda. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one too. Because Sham AL, especially in Hydra, you just want to um, pretty much counterattack the head of or whatever the, the head of fear. Trunda, you want to bang out as much damage as possible. You don't necessarily need her to go super fast. If it's a legendary plus six star boot with the main stat in defense, HP, or attack percent with all substats rolled into crit rate or crit damage, it's godly for late game nukers, even if it's in a broken set. True. You can start testing this condition early on, upgrading eight, uh, upgrading to level eight any possible candidates and deliberately selling any items with inappropriate roles. It can take years for free to players to get a single item of such value. And before I lose this thought, I want to, you know, explain to you guys, learning to manage your gear, knowing which gear is good enough to keep, like that takes a while to do. It doesn't take forever. You'll get the hang of it, but you should take, the, like, if you're serious about raid, just like you are, if you're serious with anything, take the time to learn it. There's videos out there. There are guides on how to do, like, gear cleanses. There's, if you're on PC, you can use the RSL helper. There's... You know, I have videos on it as well on how to do gear, how I do end game gear cleanses, what I look for. I have other videos going into, you know, my process, even on like newer accounts, what I look for on my wife's account. You know what I mean? Learn. And that's how you're going to be able to progress further. Right. Main reason in late game, you'll have a lot of other sources of speed. Up to 250 in late game, 350 in end game. Additional 45 uh, from boots could be sacrificed without rendering champions utterly useless. That's true. And there go niche champs. UDK more two is another one. Packmaster unkillable clan boss nukers who need specific low speeds or no speed at all. Gauntlets, uh, gauntlets and chests with flat main stats could be godly items for arena speedsters, but very strict conditions must be met. Speed, impulse, protection set. Six star legendary, three plus rolls into speed substats for late game, and you want quads for end game. Yeah, he's he's not wrong. He's not wrong. 